Am I audible at the back? Thank you. Uh, how much time I have from now? 10 minutes. 10 minutes, OK. Uh, please, let's have our slide. Uh, before I begin, I say thank you, Evie, for inviting me. It's my pleasure. And also to everybody who are here, uh, it's a great pleasure to talk to you. In this presentation, I'm taking a different approach. I'll not take any specific company, but rather walk through general trend in the technologies that is happening. And then, in the end, I have some proposals for everyone to consider, and let's have a uh, look forward to those proposals. So in the beginning, I need an identity. And that identity, I have the first slide, which talks about my company. I'm so glad I'm here. And because of the company I'm here, that's my identity. Uh, can I have, uh, there are, this is slide two, OK. This is the content of my presentation. Uh, this is what I'm going to speak in general. So please look at the slides or, or focus on what you're talking. And this is a general trend in the technology that we see, and we'll talk more about it. Next slide, please. Yes, that's my identity uh, about Rome. Rome is one of the uh, leading semiconductor industry in the uh, ecosystem, and we are about tw about 24,000 people with a revenue about 5,000 million yen. That's our identity. Next slide, please. Similar, our journey is also about more than 70 years. Uh, that's the proud presence of semiconductor industry as a home, and I'm also so proud to be associated with this. Next slide, please. We have a motto, a vision, and our technology from Japan has a vision for India as well as a sustainability. And we consider electronics can do a lot of, lot of social uh, work in terms of producing new technology, new uh, devices, new structure. And that's the service we want to provide as a supplier to the industry and also do social innovation in terms of supplying good quality products. Next slide, please. My topic is miniaturization. Miniaturization is inevitable because we need to, as explained in pre by previous speaker, we need to reduce losses, operate at high temperature, especially automotive, it goes to 175 degrees centigrade, improve the junction temperature, and also have improved packaging. All this requires a different kind of architecture. And you have seen a wide range of technology that has come over the time. It also requires a different kind of layout, it requires different materials. When you talk of materials, silicon is still the mainstream technology. It never slips, it still is working. But in certain innovative or new areas, silicon may not work. And that's the technology trend I'm going to talk about. In addition to these, when you put this chip on certain material, it requires a lot of mechanical and electrical properties. Those are to be considered, and that's why the material comes here. In addition to these, when you put chip on a PCB, the thermal should be very good so that the heat generated during the transfer of power is dissipated into the system. And this is true whether it is wafer, whether it's a discrete device, whether it's a module or a system, which our previous speaker has already talked about and made my job a little clearer because now we already have a base where you understand that it is not the device. It is also the system integration and module that is play an important role in terms of reducing the number of components and how it make it more efficient to take the energy in a more efficient way. But all these methods, as it said, requires a kind of framework, which I call a 6M framework, which requires man. Samburan, someone asked me, or asked, who, what is the manpower? Yes, we need to consider in this whole material and miniaturization, one particular, what are the skills men are needed? Next methodology is what are the processes we follow? And the tools we'll be using, in addition to material in question, as well as the impact on the environment. 
And finally, a measure mechanism, how we see in terms of what we are doing. It should be always considered in a framework that is not miniaturization alone. It is also the 6M framework to be very precise to be considered. Next slide, please. I take one particular example in silicon, and especially those who are designers should consider very uh, important. First of all, when you consider silicon, there are conflicting requirement. First one, when you take a particular device, its resistance should be as small as possible. That requires its size to be a little bigger based on the area. On the other hand, it also has capacitance, which requires how faster we can switch. And that's why it becomes a conflicting requirement. So when you design for a particular system, it is very important we keep in mind both the component, which is called the figure of merit. And we show one of the examples. A particular device, when you compare from one manufacturer to another, they might have same figure of merit, but it's also very important for the designer for what it has been designed. And that's why a particular selection of the company is very specific to the application and to be considered what kind of technology, what kind of structures are used to make it happen. That will make our design more complete. In addition to this, it is not the silicon chip alone, how it is taken to the outside world. That is also very important, as well as the whole frame, which is also having some kind of resistance. So when you talk about any kind of device, it is not the device alone, but in terms of the peripherals and other environment where it goes, and what kind of extra component it adds to the loss, that's also to be considered to be more efficient. Next slide, please. We go to the next slide. OK, uh, previous slide, previous slide, please. Yeah. So when you talk of miniaturization, we talked about a lot of structural, which is about reducing the size of the device. That's one part on the left-hand side. And then using a lot of bonding materials that require studying about the material characteristics and lots of simulation software is available. All because to have a small form factor, have a higher power density, higher temperature operation, and to have higher current capability when you put uh, many devices together. And also, as the, we have seen from previous presentation, faster switching and uh, high power operation. But in addition to this, there is one part which is very, very difficult, that even if we design silicon for a given environment, at high temperature, we cannot derive all the power out of it, as you see if the top uh, figure that when it, the temperature goes up, the amount of power that we can derive is very, very less. And that's why there are certain materials we can work at very high temperature. And that's why high band gap material becomes an important part. And we consider another two important material. Next slide, we'll see that what are the key properties which make the other materials more important in terms of designing the new avenues or new EBs that we find uh, in the evolving uh, technology or requirement. Can I have, yeah. So you see, which has been already uh, introduced to you, that when you talk about other material, there are certain key properties which makes its thermal property very, very important. For example, it's, and it has different effect on different way it can take. On devices, it can use, reduce the size. In terms of system, we have smaller, and there are a lot of other peripherals we call passives, like inductance and capacitance, which can be embedded and make it much smaller. But in terms of applications, we see that it becomes smaller and faster, and also it helps integration of the devices. So on the left, we see a figure where it talks about a high gain material and silicon, where it stands together. So each one has their own place. Silicon has its own place, but emerging applications where you see some of the high band gap material also has important, which you have to consider. Next slide. Here comes the design criteria. We have different materials, mainstream material. Here again, I'll consider we have focused only high power devices. There are other two areas, which is CMOS and optoelectronics, which is also important in terms of integration. But for the discussion, we have considered only high-power devices. But when you talk about high-power devices, there is one important part. How much of power we can to derive out of it? Or what, 
That way, the frequency of operation becomes very important. If you consider the high power devices, the, the higher the frequency, then it have to be the high band material like silicon or gallium nitride devices. And based on these, we have different kind of devices. As previous speakers spoke, we have IGBT, we have silicon carbide, but both have same application. Both IGBT and silicon carbide can go to the same application, but the consider comes cost, efficiency, and size. If the cost is more important and size is okay, we can still go with silicon and silicon IGBT. But in some cases, the size has to be removed. We should go for high band gap material. In that case, the system reduction itself gives a lot of cost advantage and its volume. So the decision makes, the decision of considering a particular material depends upon what is that application at considering, what is the customer looking for in terms of shrinkage, size, or efficiency. That determines what kind of material will be used. Next one. We give uh, two uh, examples in terms of silicon carbide device and efficiency, especially mug converter. This is a very important application because we have initially a socket, AC, DC. Now it is 48 volts. Now in order to transfer power, it could be 72 volt. And then from 72 volt, there are places where you would require very small voltage, like five volts, three volts. That kind of conversion which requires a buck converter could be designed. And for those kind of small devices and higher efficiency, some cases silicon carbide could even do better. So again, I repeat, there are places where silicon is still applicable, but places some high power, or high band gap material becomes so eminent because it reduces the system size and increases the efficiency. Next one. There is another one which is a good example where you can reduce 12 parts by single part and overall the thermals that goes into the system. Using a, a good material, which is a good thermal efficiency, we can reduce the number of components, 12 becomes one, and the system size becomes so small. Next one. So uh, what we see in this whole example, that miniaturization we talk about, there are a lot of activities taking place in terms of device optimization, in terms of substrate thinning. This is where I have to spend one more time. When you talk of devices, that we see what are the things you can do as a device. The way we put the substrate, how thin it could be, that could also reduce the on resistance. So that's another kind of technology the manufacturer use, how to reduce the substrate when you put, and that this resistance becomes smaller so that overall it becomes more efficient. So in terms of miniaturization, we'll find a lot of things are happening in the industry as a general trend. First of all, new mold compounds, their, their mechanical and thermal properties. Then raw resistivity material. Initially, when it started, it was gold, then aluminum. Now it is copper. And it has come a lot of innovation in terms of cost. Cost plays an important role for our customers, and that to be considered. In terms of new materials, there are three mainstream materials that is very specific for power electronics, but other materials we are not considering who are into optomal electronics or could be CMOS technology, which are very essential. The package design is very important because our devices are fine, it is working, but how does the package work in terms of reducing the size, in terms of how it is put on the PCB and gives a good, good thermal conductivity, that is very important, and that's called another part. And there are new designs coming from traditional package designing to very specific EB, which are maybe tall, and others which many of our industry colleagues are doing. Next slide. So uh, this is what was sp uh, speaking, that there are many which were independent traditionally. They were OEMs we could really identify, tier one, tier two. But things are changing. Some of the OEMs also taking the role of tier one and taking materials from two. So supply chain has gone change. There could be another places where the company itself want to take advantage of whole ecosystem as a one system integration, like fully integrated. So based on the needs, it's possible who we are and where we can collaborate. And I have some suggestion here as a tier one in few cases, tier two or OEM, we find that could be some good fit where you can collaborate because we do not want to take control of the total system. We want to specifically 
put our strength where we would are, and then leverage the strength of other to build a system in order to have a kind of way forward that what is that we have to do in terms of localization, especially in India perspective, in terms of cost reduction, in terms of partnership and collaboration, in terms of development roadmap, in terms of giving service to the new demand, which cannot be done by single, single-handedly by one particular industry. And this is what my proposal to everybody who are here, you are decision makers, you know, where we are, and can we not find out where you can collaborate based on our strength, and then do something which is very specific to India, but think globally in terms of quality, and go global, from India local to global. And this is the slide we want to talk about that I was there in the first EB as well as the second one. And we have a lot of data, we got a lot of information, we got a lot of insights, but what, what is next? What is next would be our decision. What is that we want to take forward from here? What thing the organizers are thinking that what are the insights given from this conference could be put together and we find out what could be our next action plan to create value which creates a wow to the customer on time as well as creates a value. And this is possible only when think strategically, strategically in terms of localization, sustainability, and giving our best based on our strength. I stop here for questions.